So radars are active systems. They're active remote sensing systems as opposed to passive remote sensing systems. And that's quite significant because it means that we have control over the illumination of the target area. Now, much like uh, the difference between us and bats is that our ears, for example, are only used passively. We are just picking up the signals that come from around us and we're detecting that and it depends on the noises that are ambient to our environment. If you were a bat, you would actually transmit a noise. You would send out a signal from your mouth and you would actively listen for the echoes that come back. And that's what we do with a radar system. So we are actively transmitting our own signal and waiting for the echoes to come back. This is really useful because it gives us complete control over the illumination of the target. It means that we can define the wavelength and frequency of the signal that we send out. We can also control the polarization. So we can decide to transmit vertically polarized or horizontally polarized waves. That kind of control is really useful and because we're no longer relying on solar illumination from the sun, it means that we can make measurements during the daytime and also during the nighttime. We're not dependent on the sunlight. We're just generating our own signal to illuminate the area. The other advantage we have as an active system is because the radars are, we're going to look at are measuring in wavelengths of a scales of a few centimeters, is that we don't have any impact from clouds because the water droplets in clouds are so much smaller than the size of our wavelengths. And even large droplets of rain aren't going to affect the longer wavelengths that we would look at. That means that radar remote sensing is largely weather independent. We're not dependent on cloud cover. Uh, we're not, we don't have a big impact from, from rainfall even. Now, one of the key things we have to think about in terms of understanding radar measurements is that if we send out a pulse and we are listening for the echo coming back, we have to have some understanding of how those microwaves interact with the Earth's surface. In a very general sense, one of the things that we need to consider is that the wavelengths that we're measuring at, because they're on a scale of a few centimetres, then it's actually properties of the Earth's surface that are on a scale of a few centimetres that mostly influences the signal that we will get back to our radar system. When we look at surface roughness, for example, what we're interested in now is surface roughness on a scale of our wavelength, so on a scale of a few centimetres. This can be the small wind ripples on the ocean surface, or it can be the texture and roughness of a, uh, an agricultural field. But the key thing is it's on a scale of a few centimetres, on a scale of the wavelength. The dielectric properties of the material also has, have an influence. And for the most part, for most applications that we're interested in in Earth observation, it is the liquid water content of the material that will have the biggest influence on the dielectric properties. Now, the dielectric properties influences how much energy is scattered. It doesn't change the direction in which that energy is scattered. The key properties of the Earth's surface that determine in which direction the energy is scattered is the roughness and also the orientation of the surface. The orientation is important because we are transmitting polarised waves. Polarised waves have an orientation and as they meet other objects, that may be oriented in different ways, then the interaction will be quite different. The slope direction or individual scattering objects like twigs or branches in a tree may have a particular orientation that means that the interaction of the polarized waves may be different as a consequence of the different orientation of the target. One of the key things about a radar system is that we measure the time delay. The key thing that a radar is exceptionally good at is measuring how long it takes the echo to come back. 